Okay, so let's take a look at some of these knots a little bit closer. The first knot that we need to know is called the end of the line bowline. What you want to do is start with about, you know, for paracord I'm, I'm using here, I'm going to start with about a, uh, a 10 to 12 inch piece. And that short piece is going to become my, my working end. The long piece is going to become my standing end. So when I refer to that, you'll know what I'm talking about. This is called a bite, where the rope doesn't cross itself. If the rope crosses itself, it's called a loop. All right. So what I want to do is I want to make a loop in the rope. And as I'm looking down at this, the working end is on the bottom and the standing end is on top where it crosses. All right, so this is the beginning of my bowline. Working end on bottom, or and yes, working end on bottom, standing end is on top of the loop. From there, from bottom to top, I'm gonna to push a bite up through that loop. Just like that. So what I've got now is what I'm gonna call, and you're looking at it opposite I am, but on my right hand side, I've got a side that I'm gonna call the clean side because there's nothing, nothing there. There's no loops, no knops, no twists, nothing. That's my clean side. On my left hand side, I've got what I'll call the dirty side because it goes around itself. I have, I have loops. With myself set up that way, I'm going to take the working end from my chest away and I'm going to push that working end through that bite and I'm going to hold it right there. I'm going to give myself a good four inches or so, fold it back on itself, hold that together. Now what I've got is a bite inside of another bite that's pushed up through a loop. Pull on the working end, sorry, pull on the standing end, and you'll see what I've created is a bowline. The way that you check it is that you should have a fixed loop, which I do. My working end is coming out of a teardrop shaped bite that has a locking bar right here. If I flip it over on the back side and look, I basically have almost a triangle formed by the rope. All right, so the other key thing is my tail, my working end right here, my tail is coming from the inside of the loop, not the other way around. Now from there I need to tie a security knot. So what I'll tie is an overhand. All I'm going to do is take the tail going around the actual uh, top leg of the loop and then from bottom to top of that loop I'm going to pull it through. Now I've got an overhand that's actually tied. The overhand is actually tied on this portion of the loop. And that's a security knot that keeps it in place. All right, the next knot that I'm gonna show you is, is a modification of the trucker's hitch that I like to do because it makes it easier to tie by holding the slack whenever you use it. So uh, the trucker's hitch is a very common hitch that's used in order to establish ridge lines. And I'm gonna show you one little quick modification on it that I think makes it even better. So for the trucker's hitch, uh, I'm going around my second anchor point here. Got snagged here. I'm going around my second anchor point. So this is my ridge line going to my original anchor point. This is my second anchor point. And once I get around that, I'm coming probably you know a third of the way back towards the other anchor point and I'm gonna make a loop and I'm gonna pull a bite through that loop to establish a quick release what this is, is an overhand slip which I'll show you a little bit later that's an overhand slip that gives me a fixed loop in the rope that I can use in order to make uh, in order to tension this back together so on a normal trucker's hitch I would come back through that loop with the end and that gives me a mechanical advantage. All I did was, was go around the anchor point and then come back through this loop that I made. Now I can pull towards the anchor point and it'll tighten this up as I'm going. What I like to do is once I get it 
tight like this, I've got to tie this off so it doesn't actually uh, slip on me. Right now, if I let go on this side, it's going to slip, you know, and I've got to constantly fight it to hold tension here and put everything uh, and put all my knots in there to keep it secure. So what I like to do is instead of just going around and going through this loop once, I'll come through a second time with the end. And what I've done is, is I've created a round turn inside this loop. Now when I pull tension towards that anchor point, it actually bites on itself. I can let go of this and it maintains the tension. So if you're familiar with the trucker's hitch, I recommend you add that little modification in there and it'll make it that much easier to tie. So now I can pull my tension and it doesn't slip when I let go. Now I can come in here and tie it off. What I like to tie it off with first is a, a quick half hitch. And then I'll do a half hitch on a quick release for the second loop. And I'll leave that in place because this becomes part of my five minute shelter system. When I want to take it out, I can just pull on the end and it'll pop free. Take that half hitch out. I keep from tangling here. Take that half hitch out and then I can pop this loose and take my ridge line down. Now let's take a look at another knot that we're going to use. We're going to use this in the number 36 bank line uh, cordage that we're using to make our Prusik loops, which is another knot we'll get into right after this. But the fisherman's knot. Uh, fisherman's knot is very simple. It's uh, very similar to the overhand. Actually, it is two overhands, but they join each other. So what we're trying to do is join the ropes together and make a loop. So with the ends pointed opposite each other, all we're going to do is tie an overhand just like we just did. See, I've got my I've got my loop and I'm coming back through. All I did was tie an overhand, but that overhand is tied on the other end or around the other end of the rope. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side, around the other portion of the rope. Make a loop. Sorry, try to keep my fingers out of the way. Make a loop around that end and then come back through that loop. Now I've got an overhand on one side and an overhand on the other and when I actually pull those tight you're going to form your fisherman's knot. It's basically two overhands and with the tension it pulls them closer together. That's a joining knot called the fisherman's knot. And that is how we're going to create a loop in the number 36 bank line uh, to make our Prusik loops to make the shelter go that much quicker. Alright so let's take a look at the Prusik knot that we're using in this loop. Now, it may be a, a little more difficult to see, but I've already made it that loop. Just a little about a 12 inches of bank line, number 36 bank line. And uh, I've already put my fisherman's knot in the end to create this loop. All right. So what a Prusik is designed to do is you take a, a line or cordage or a rope of smaller diameter and you attach it to a, a rope or cordage of larger diameter and it's designed to bite into that rope so that when you pull tension on it, it doesn't release and it actually keeps tight. So it's a great knot to know uh, for ridge lines and for shelters. So um, it's actually kind of, uh, you know, I can, I can show you another quick knot while we're at it, uh, just because one leads into the, into the other. So um, what I've got is a fixed loop and I'm gonna lay that over the paracord that I have here. If I just take one end and go around and come back through the loop that's made. What I'm starting to form here is called a girth hitch. Uh, I think it's also called a lark's head knot. But this is a girth hitch at this point if it has one wrap around. And that can be used, you know, to establish a line like that. Now, because I want more bite than that, you can see how easily that slides. I want more bite to that so that when I pull it tight, it stays. What I'm going to do is, is instead of just going around once and making a girth hitch, I'm going to go around a second time. And create what's called a four wrap Prusik. And make sure that my 
ends are not crossing, what I should have is four parallel wraps going around it that are not crossing each other. And then I have a, a cross locking bar here with my loop coming out of the bottom. So I've got one, two, three, four parallel wraps, cross locking bar, nothing's crossing. And I can kind of tighten that down. Now, whenever I slide that somewhere and I put tension on it, it bites into the rope and it won't let go. If I need to move it, I can take that cross locking bar, pull it down to unlock it, which puts slack in the loops, and I can slide it wherever I need. So this is a great thing for shelter. So whenever you start getting slack in your line after it's been up for a while or if it rains, you can tighten it up really quickly with a Prusik system rather than have to untie, stretch that out, you know, stretch out that slack and then tie it again. So it's great not to know. Um, and just for, for added security, if you're tying a, a rope that's, that is the same diameter or a cordage that's the same diameter uh, as the, the cordage you're trying to tie it onto, in order to give it more purchase, the more wraps you give it, the more purchase it's gonna have. So what I like to do just to be safe is go ahead and do a six wrap Prusik where I take it through one more time and then dress it up to where none of the loops are actually crossing over each other so they stay parallel. Now I've got six parallel loops with that cross locking bar and it gives me even more of a bite into the rope whenever I put tension on it. So that is the Prusik knot.